everybody welcome to the video so somebody asked me in a recent comment under a video of mine about transitioning from a pretty high level job this individual i believe he said he was about 50 years old making 250k a year but it's a type of job that he doesn't really like so he wants to transition transition back into coding although he hasn't written any code for many 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 years now so you wanted my opinion about how to do that. Anybody who follows my channel knows what I'm going to say, but let's uh, jump into it anyway. I always suggest if you want to move from career A to B, B being the coding, what you should do is transition into it. Why? Because there's always an inertia period when getting back into code or getting to code for the first time. And you want to be able to learn without having the pressure, the added pressure, having no income. Although this individual said he had 10 years worth of FU money, I'm assuming and hoping that's outside of his retirement money, but that's still pretty good, 10 years, right? That being said, I would still suggest for at least a little while, while you re-acquaint yourself with the fundamentals of development, that you still keep your job. So maybe do 20 minutes a night, minimum, learning how to code, maybe on a Saturday, do an hour or two. Why do I suggest that as opposed to dropping everything, going full bore, eight hours a day learning code? Well, first of all, if you're learning how to code, the maximum I recommend per day is four hours. That's just because of the way our brains work. After four hours of intense study, our brain's cognitive capacity typically drops quite a bit. Also, when you're learning anything new, it's like weightlifting in the sense that you have to give your brain time to rest, to assimilate all this new information, this new way of thinking, to create those new neural pathways. It takes time. So the key is to slowly introduce on a steady basis these new concepts and techniques, the coding, and give your brain time to absorb all this stuff. That's number one. Number two... Once you have the fundamentals mastered, you build your first website in the case of web, uh, what I have people do is go out and do two to three small freelance projects that get you, just to get your hands dirty, managing real clients, understanding how to uh, set up contracts, learning how to budget your time. Although if you have a deep background in this already, all those skills will be transferable into the uh, web space. Now, when you jump into the web, the average developer in the U.S. makes about 100,000 a year entry level, which is less than half what this dude is making now. But over time, within uh, three to four years, the average goes up to about 130, 140. Now, because of your deep background and you're already a high paid individual making a quarter million a year, I would imagine that those skills and experiences will add value to you as a developer. So if you have extensive skills managing projects, managing people, once you've integrated some development skills, those will transfer over 100%. So I would venture a guess, if I'm guessing here, I think that you could probably get back to your previous salary within, uh, within a few years, if not sooner, depending on what you do. One last thing to consider. Now, as he stated in his comment under uh, one of my videos, he doesn't like what he does now. The hours are bad, et cetera, et cetera. I totally understand. I got advice from somebody a long time ago. He was about 40 years old at the time. And he said, the big mistake I've made is, is I took a profession, a job that I did not like. And he made a lot of money, and, but he said, even if you make a lot of money, if you're going into work, a job you hate, life is not fun. And what he actually ended up doing is around 40 years old, I forget exactly, he quit his job and I kid you not, started delivering newspapers. That's when newspapers were a thing. So he used to like to run and jog. So he figured I might as well just do it with newspapers on my back. So he started doing newspaper runs as strange as it sounds. So he's, of course, making a tiny fraction of what he was making before, although he had a lot of savings and so on. But he enjoyed his life much more as a newspaper delivery boy, man, than he did as an executive at a big company. Here's one of the tragic things about life. A lot of people will take on careers that are safe, 
that make money, and then they go through life uh, hoping or waiting for the day when they'll retire at 55 or 65, and then they'll be able to do what they want. A lot of people don't make it to that age, right? A lot of people, or they suffer some uh, really bad illnesses, so they're not able to enjoy a lifetime of work and saving and investing at 65. So there's always a, a bit of a gamble there. His advice to me was to do what you like, because better to do what you like every day and make less than do what you don't like and make a lot more. Life will be not too fun. So I can understand this guy's point of view, wanting to leave his job now. He's done well for himself, saved up money. Uh, that's great. I would still transition into it because, you know what? Coding may seem like a lot of fun to you, and it may very well be. But you don't really know until you jump into the game. So my suggestion would to be, again, to transition to it. So first of all, you give your brain a chance to adapt to a new uh, way of thinking. And, and so you learn the new skills. And then B, start dabbling into it in a commercial way. So you get a feel for what it is to be, for example, a freelance developer or develop your own SaaS products. Uh, it's always greener on the other side of the fence, as they say. And you may find that, yes, in certain aspects of development may seem like a lot of fun, but when you jump into it, you may not like it as much as you would have thought. I'm not trying to say don't pursue it. I enjoy development. I have a heck of a lot of fun with it since the 90s. Uh, but you never know. You never know. That's why I tiptoe your way into it. And when you really ha have a taste of it and you know what it's like, then, you know, if it's great, then you can jump full bore having set up all of those fundamental uh, positions, if you will. I hope that helps. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I have a mentoring program. Check out the link below, unclesteph.com. Everything you need to become a developer, it's a boot camp. It teaches everything that you need to become a professional developer and so much more. It goes into uh, soft skills, psychological skills. It teaches you how to manage projects, manage clients. Uh, how to become a freelancer, even a personal finance in there, and a whole bunch more. It's a unique program because it's very flexible. You can uh, bow out if you need to. I don't lock you in like all the other boot camps, or at least the majority of them. If you say after three, four months it's not for you, you can just pause it, come back to it three, four months later, six months later, it doesn't really matter, or you can pause it or cancel indefinitely. I don't hold you to, uh, to fulfill the full contract, uh, for the most part, asterisk. If you start using the private consults with me, then, of course, you're obligated to, uh, to pay me for that. But beyond that, you're golden. Lots of flexibility. You can learn every other day. You can learn 20 minutes a day. How fast you learn, how long it takes you, that's entirely up to you. That's another aspect of the flexibility in this program. I know a lot of people have full-time jobs. They can't quit and start, going to start working on coding four, five, eight hours a day. It's not realistic for many people. So I designed this program to be flexible so you can learn at a rate that makes sense for you. That's cool. And you get the full support, the classroom experience. You get to talk to me, your teacher, uh, on a regular basis. So it's pretty cool. Check it out. Other than that, I do have my self-paced learning courses that you can also take on your own. Check out Lizard Wizard. That's a special one that you may really find interesting. Lizard Wizard. All right, thanks for watching.